Hey, what's up guys and welcome back to Ask NK. So today we're looking at one new uh, cool feature that is now available in Blender 2.90.0 Alpha. It is not this, it's not the new sky, it's none of those. It is a pretty cool feature and at the same time it has nothing as well to do with any of the things that we've talked about that looks like this. All right, no, it doesn't, it, it's nothing like this. You know, all of this stuff which we talked about two weeks ago, nah, it's none of those. The feature which we're looking at today is how you can now convert your animations and also your 3D models to 2D. Now, just in case you haven't seen this, I'm definitely going to show you guys how that works. So for example, we have a cube here. What I'm going to do is just simply press tab on the keyboard, tap three, just to switch to face, click right here, press I, to insert this and press E to simply extrude that all the way up. Now we've talked about a couple of other things before, like, you know, going through here and making some changes if, you know, this is what you're going for. And at the same time, talking about the bevel thing, which we've already done previously. So how this works is very simple. Let's say you're done creating your stuff. All you need to do is simply go over to object, go to this part called convert. So you can see grease pencil from mesh. That's exactly what you can do now. And once you do that, you have yourself a grease pencil. Now this is very interesting. And I know it's going to be a lot of use case for anyone who is into 2D animations and stuff. Now we've already talked about the, the LAN PR and LAN PR seems to simulate an idea that looks like this. But now they are actually refactoring and reworking the whole LAN PR thing in a different mode, not like we looked at before. But this feature is very, very interesting. Now the idea that you can now convert this is going to save you a tremendous amount of time. So I went back to take a look at Blender 2.83, which is now looking a little bit obsolete now, because if you go over to the object mode and you go over to convert, you only have grease pencil from curve, you have mesh from curve, and you have curve from mesh and text. So these are the basic ones that you have. And you know, if you're using Blender 2.83, but with the brand new version here, you can now easily play with this and actually get some pretty cool stuff. So if I go ahead and have the selection and press the tab key, you can see automatically we are in the grease pencil zone. So you can now start noticing that I can move things around and I can play with this thing and then start getting some pretty cool stuff. Now, if you've seen this and you're like, okay, so what other use case can this thing be used for? So a very good one is if I press N on the keyboard and select either the gravity rope or, you know, the, the traffic tool, which we've talked about before. But the first one, which I'd like to show you guys is the building tool. So we've talked about the building tool and it got a lot of reception and the huge shout out to all of the developers that worked on this so if i go through and make a change like that so let's you know make a change like this and then press the tab key click on any of these points press a to select click right here to add a floor i'm just simply going to bring this all the way to this point and add a roof now if we add this roof and switch this from flat roof to hip roof which is looking nice we can also add one point here and simply proceed to add a door so if i add this tiny door here let me increase the size of the door about that point bring this a little bit down to a point like that and you can go ahead and add a couple of windows imagine you are trying to work on a scene where you have a couple of 3d models all right or maybe you're trying to work on the layout and you're thinking about how you draw this in perspective now instead of drawing this in perspective you can now easily convert this and an interesting part about this is once you make this conversion automatically creates material for the line and also for the fuel so you can go over to the fuel section and you can start making adjustments click right here and make a couple of changes all right so you can see that that's really really interesting you can also go over to the stroke and within the stroke you can still make the changes that you want now this is also going to be very useful for a lot of people and if you're considering what about animation what if you want to animate does this support animation so sometime in march this was also teased by the blender development you know guys and it's really interesting to see that you have that feature here although i have a little bit of things which i would like to talk about when we're done talking about this and i would like you to stick around for that so if i click right here and you know press i on the keyboard i can create a location key i can also move this all the way to 40 and simply raise this all the way up and right now you see we have another key right here right there i'm going to go all the way back to one and now let's rotate this bad boy but before we do that press i and click on rotation just to keep that there go all the way to 40 
and I'm simply going to rotate this. So if you've seen the video where we talked about animation layer, you see that if you're trying to layer stuff, this is going to be extremely useful. So with this here, if you're also thinking about making a 2D animation, but you want to have that 3D animation feeling to it, not really with the shading, but you know, you want to animate things in 3D, then you want to implement them in 2D, then this would be extremely useful because right now, once I go through and play back this animation, you can see it's a 3D looking animation, right? But if I select this and go over to object, scroll all the way down to where we have animation, I can now bake mesh to grease pencil. Lovely. So with this now, you can start noticing that we have a pretty cool thing going on. Actually, you don't really see it because if I zoom all the way out, you don't see that. All right, let's turn off the auto key. And if we go back, and get close to this object, you would notice we have the cube and we have the grease pencil. If I turn this off, you can start noticing the grease pencil. The first thing which you notice is everything looks white. But then, because we're working with this grease pencil and it does automatically what it does for your normal models, if I go over to this part where we have called lines, we can go down to this part called stroke and we can increase the thickness of the stroke. So if I simply start increasing this, you can start noticing that we're having the thickness right here. So the era or the time where you want to spend, you know, a crazy amount of time trying to work with, uh, you know, perspective stuff, I think Blender is beginning to close that gap. It's pretty easy for you to create a 3D model and convert it to a 2D looking stuff. And at the same time, you can go in and start playing with all of the, you know, interesting and amazing tools that comes with Blender. So if this is, you know, something for you, if this is something that you like to work with, of course, you can take advantage of all of the tools that exist right here. So with all this said, I also noticed that there are certain things which I pretty much don't really like with the whole of the, not like I don't like them. It's just that I wish that over time they should actually consider this while they're trying to implement or while they're trying to round up this. I'm looking at the fact that you cannot really control. Of course, you can control the, the stroke. That's not a problem. Yeah, of course, you can control the stroke, which isn't a problem at all. You know, you can do all of these things with the stroke, which is not a problem for me. I just wish like if they can find a way to make it possible that you can play with the amount of stroke that you have. So I'm going to show you guys what I mean. What I mean by this is if I go through and delete this, hold down shift and tap A and simply bring out Suzanne the monkey, we can go through and also make control two on the keyboard, right click, smooth shade her, go right here, click right here, which is also a new feature in case you haven't seen this in apply. But then with this here, if I select this object and then, all right, and then I come down to this part and convert this to a mesh or, you know, to a grease pen. So I have all of these lines at this point, it is either me or, you know, I, I don't know how to simply play with this. So if this is a, something that is from them, I really wish maybe there could be this outline looking thingy where you can simply mark the outlines that you want. But despite that, this is just what it is. So for, for the most part, you have this tool looking like this and you can barely, you know, uh, change all of these things. The only thing you can change is the strength of the stroke, which is already something that we've looked at right now. So if you want to change the strength of the stroke, that is very possible. You can do that, but you cannot really mark lines and say, maybe I'm marking these parts as seams. And I would like to get those parts to be the part that will simply have the outlines. So this is just, well, you know what I think. One other thing that I would like to also chip in before we go is if you're trying to work with this, and for example, we're looking at working with the building tool and maybe you've gone ahead to apply textures and all that stuff. At the end of the day, if you simply select this and you go over to object and you choose to convert this to grease pencil from mesh, you're going to get a black and white image. Now, the whole idea here is once you do that, you can choose to keep the original file. You can choose to play with the thickness of what you want, you know, play with the stroke, play with any of those things that you want to get. But you would not be able for any reason at all to keep the textures. And this is one thing I wish, you know, that they can actually take a look at. And from here, you can also choose to get only, you know, uh, edges if you just want only seam edges. But if you don't want that, you want all of this, you can proceed to getting that. And another thing that you would also notice is the minute you convert this, 
all of your materials actually change all right so the materials that you've applied to you know various parts of your model they just simply change all the way to white so if there's a way they can convey this stuff so once you have your materials like this so all of these materials i have right here once you have them and you proceed to convert this they can convert that way it will make a lot of sense so for what we have here i've also gone ahead to add you know some array meshes of course i understand that this is 2d 3d thingy but right now we don't get to see those but if you're trying to work with the modifier and you want to be able to see your objects you know with the modifiers you need to make sure that you have these modifiers active if the modifiers are not active for any reason and you switch this to you know um that you see you get to lose the modifiers but if the modifiers are active on your viewport this would make a lot of sense because right now you can simply go from here convert and convert this so all it does is it collapses the whole layer stack collapses everything and gives you you know the image or the 2d image that you're looking for so from here what you can do now is just simply select any of them and it automatically selects all of them and you can go from this part and start making changes so any of the changes that you've made to your previous material you lose them but you can now have access to those materials as they turn them to 2d materials and you can simply start working with them but uh, despite this the animation part works it doesn't work for heavy scenes at all so i tried it with a heavy scene it doesn't work for it at all but it works if you're just animating you know basic objects you're just doing normal keyframing all right that works it doesn't work for amateurs didn't work you know i tried it, it didn't work and you know that's just basically it so this is the new feature right here and i just felt like i should bring it to you guys notice so just in case you're thinking about doing something with this you can definitely take a look at this and also get going with it so tell me what you guys think about this in the comment section and if you like this video or you learned something from this you can go ahead and give it a like and don't forget to share with a friend and if you're new here it's going to be amazing for you to hit the subscribe button and also turn on the notification so that you don't miss the next video or the next update and until i see you guys again with a tutorial update free friday tutorial tuesday tips and tricks Things like this. Peace.